Merry Meat. In this lecture, I am going to be discussing the importance of cleansing and consecrating your tools and what these terms actually do mean and why it's not only important to do this prior to your initial use, but it's also a good idea to do it every so often between your rituals. The cleansing of your tools is very important to do. Now when we think of cleaning tools, some people automatically think physical cleaning. And this can be important, especially if you're working with items that are handmade or from nature or that you're repurposing for magical use that was originally not, like you purchased something from Goodwill, like an old ashtray and you need to get it cleaned out. Um, we don't always mean physical cleaning, but we'll start there because this is something that does come up from time to time. When we first get an item that physically needs to be cleaned out, make sure you understand the materials you're working with. This, of course, is a given. Don't simply submerge your tools into water and soap. Always make sure that you're giving proper care to the tools and show respect. I always suggest getting a couple of soft cloths and dipping the cloth in water and a cleaning solution. Always use non-abrasive soaps and then clean out the item, making sure you get into all the little nooks and crannies of the, of the item. Um, if you're cleaning things out that are things like a cast iron cauldron, you don't want to leave any water in it, so make sure that you're drying it completely, otherwise it will cause it to rust, and that's never a good thing. Um, make sure that if you are physically cleaning, you're not ruining the items. So don't just run your chalice through a dishwasher or whatnot. Give each item that you feel needs a physical cleaning uh, the concentration and the respect that it deserves always hand wash all of your ritual tools if you're going to need to clean them physically. Now when we're talking about uh, cleaning or cleansing a magical tool, we traditionally are talking about cleansing the energy that the tools may have collected between the time that you got the item to the time that you're using it. Our magical tools come from all over the place. Uh, so it can be stuff that we've created, things that we found in nature, things that we've bought from the store that we've had specially made through a tradesman. We might order an item online and have them delivered. So we have to consider how these items got from point A to point B. If we gathered the items in nature, we also have to consider a number of things and first who may have come in contact with these things before us. Let's for example take a branch that we have found under a tree and we're going to craft that into a wand. Do we know everything we need to know about the branch? Not only what tree this comes from to understand the wood magic that we're using, but what's happened to that tree for all the years it's been there? Remember, everything in nature holds on to the vibrations of the energy that has happened to it. So, did somebody get married under that tree? Did someone break up under that tree? Was that tree used to support someone during times of grief? Was it witness to a hanging, to anger? Did somebody say, hey, cut a switch and you're going to get a beaten? What energy does that tree hold on to? So we have to keep in mind that anybody who has passed through, anybody who has come in contact with, anything that that tree has felt or seen is attached to the energy of that tree. And it's not only trees, stones, herbs, everything in nature holds on to the energy that surrounds it, which is why we always need to cleanse it before we use it. Now the same comes true with things that you purchase. Say you buy the wand at a local store 
and now these items all have energies that they come across too. Not only for, do we have the tree from which the branch is from, but we also have to consider who made the tool. Was that person a positive person? Or are they working in a sweatshop making these wands for our pleasure? Um, do we know the type of person that it came from? Uh, the wand was shipped to the store and so it came in contact with not only the person who created it, but the person who packed it, the person who worked at the mail office to ship it. Um, so then it goes to the store and it's placed on the shelf by another person, so it's coming in contact with yet another person. Then we have the store uh, clerk who will come in contact with it. And then you have all the other customers who come in and touch things and add their energy to it. We don't know anything about these people, so this tool is gathering all of this energy into it from these random people. And we don't really want that for our magical workings, so we need to cleanse the energy. And there are really a lot of different ways that this can be done. One very popular way is simply using moonlight. Many practitioners find simply placing the items on your windowsill and collecting moonlight will cleanse the items of unwanted energy. And on top of this, we can look at this as a full moon charging the item with energy as well. Now, personally, I don't feel that this is enough for when you first get a tool. Um, it's nice for the in-between cleanings and chargings, but when we're getting a brand new or refurbished tool, we do need to take the extra time and care to make sure that all of the excess energy is removed. The first thing I like to do, um, and what I mentioned before with the physical cleaning, is I like to take some salt and water and mix it together, dip a soft cloth in it, and with the salt water and wipe down the item. And while I do this, I focus on the element of earth and the element of water removing that negative energy. Next, I will light a sage smudge stick and wave the smoke over the item and focus on the idea of the element of fire and the element of air removing the negative energy. Now, if you would listen to my uh, lecture on circle casting, I discussed when we're casting a circle for positive work, we always start in the east and go clockwise in the northern hemisphere. However, in this instance, we're wanting to banish negative energy. So we're starting in the north and going counterclockwise or widdershins to remove that negative energy. So we would start in the north and earth and then move to the west and water, the south and fire, and then the east and air. Another popular way to cleanse an item of negative energy is simply place the items in a bin and cover them with salt. Salt is seen as a combination of all four of the elements in one because it starts out as water and then through the heat and air it, the water evaporates and leaves earth. So, it's all four of the elements that are combined, and so it's considered a purifier of everything. And it's said to nullify any negative energy that might be attached to items simply by submerging it in salt. So if you place the items in a bin, cover it with salt, um, or alternatively, you could use dirt instead of salt and to some paths this is better because Mother Earth is now pulling the negative energy out of the tools herself. Tools would be buried anywhere from 24 hours to 3 days and preferably um, it's done during the 3 day time period starting with the crying moon, the dark moon and the new moon phase. So that 3 day phase. If you're unfamiliar with those I would suggest listening to the uh, Moon Phases lecture. 
um, then later on during the full moon they're charged. So we would remove the negative energy and then charge it later. So now we've talked of a few ways to cleanse the energy from our tools. So now let's talk about what consecration means. Consecration of a tool is similar to blessing the tools. We're asking not only the elements, but our deities, specifically our patron and matron deities, or deities specific to the tool itself, to uh, bless the tool and add specific energy to it. Sort of like a blessing and a charm mixed together. We're asking for them to say, okay, this is what this is for, and I'm adding energy to it for the specific purpose. By consecrating, we are stating that this item is to be used as a magical tool, and only as a magical tool. This is something that is sacred, and will only be used for magical workings. That the elements and deities are also going to recognize the tool as such. Usually a special ritual is performed to imbue the items with your intent. Now many people will only consecrate their tools once and consider it done, which is fine. They are now your magical tools and that's that. However, sometimes it is good to re-consecrate them. Just like with any form of magic, over time the energy will fade and it will need a boost. I like to say once a year is a good rule of thumb. Some people like to do it more often than that, such as every month or every season. Other reasons why you may want to re-consecrate your tools would be if your tools come in contact with any unwanted energy. Say, for instance, you have a snoopy friend or neighbor who comes and fiddles around with things and adds negative energy to that. You don't want that attached to your tools. So you'd want to do a re-cleansing and re-consecration of your tools. Um, in order to keep your tools safe, it's always good to have them in a special place where they aren't going to be fiddled with. But know that a lot of people have the stigma that, you know, no one should ever touch my stuff. And that's not necessarily true. People may add energy that you don't want to them, and that's easily remedied by just simply re-cleansing and re-consecrating. But no one's actually ever going to damage your stuff unless they purposefully break it. And that's annoying, but things can always be replaced. Most people aren't coming in with the intention of causing harm. Some people are. Most people aren't. And usually it's, they're just, you know, misunderstanding what it's about and not really knowing and are actually genuinely wanting to be part of your life and wanting to know. So always be ready to answer questions. And if you simply just leave your stuff laying around, people are going to be nosy and want to know what it's about. So it's always good to keep your stuff put away when not in use. But if you do get, you know, a nosy neighbor, uh, you always can simply re-cleanse and re-consecrate your stuff. Another reason that you might need to uh, do this would be because you just did a very large and intense ritual with a lot of specific energy for a specific purpose and in those cases you'll need to re-cleanse and re-consecrate your tools just because your next ritual may not want or need that specific energy um, in this case it would be those really big rituals that you would do, not necessarily for your espet or sabbat rituals, unless you feel that your tools are holding unwanted net energy. Usually you can just do the setting them in the sill uh, under the moonlight, uh, re cleanse and recharge that I mentioned first. Um, but also if things in your life have also changed too, if you have a new 
patron or matron deity that you're working with and so therefore you're no longer working with the ones that you originally consecrated your tools with you may want to change that up too so always consider your life now and how things may have changed and if you need to refocus the energy on your tools so hopefully now you understand the reason for cleansing and consecrating and what the differences are and some examples on how it can be done and when it should be done um, and how it can be redone if needed I hope you enjoyed this lecture and Mary Park.